Hey everybody, welcome to Two Over Comics. I'm Steve. Let's talk about Disney Plus. Uh, yesterday, Disney had their uh, little presentation for the press as far as uh, the launch date for their Disney Plus streaming service, which is going to be November 12th, I believe. Uh, if you guys don't know who what Disney Plus is, it's Disney's first foray into the uh, the streaming wars. Uh, the streaming wars. I mean, you guys heard of the uh, the, the cultural wars, the uh, the 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 console wars, the the clone wars. This is the streaming wars, which is basically uh, the fight for dominance as far as uh, getting your streaming content goes. Uh, which is pretty obvious right now. That's kind of the future as far as. Uh, Film and television go, uh, Netflix being one of them, the obvious one, Hulu, which is kind of, I guess, uh, out of the game since uh, Disney owns the um, the controlling stock in them. Uh, what else? Uh, Amazon Prime, Apple's in it now. Uh, I guess Warner Brothers is going to be launching their own thing. Um, but Disney's uh, trying to own the biggest piece of the, pri- uh, the pie uh, with this Disney Plus, which is going to include their whole back catalog of films, TV cartoons, all that stuff, which is um, a lot of stuff. Um, but one of the main things, obviously, we want to talk about is the uh, the Marvel, uh, the Marvel section of it. Um, now, unless you've been, you know, in a coma for the past 10 years, or you were, uh, you were kidnapped and, and living in someone's basement and have not heard, there's uh, this thing called the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is all culminating in uh, Avengers and Endgame coming out in a couple of weeks, actually. Um, as far as that goes, um, it kind of marks the a, a bookend to the Marvel Universe since its inception with Iron Man t- uh, 2008. Um, a lot of the cast contracts, the original six, uh, Mark Ruffalo, Evans, uh, R- Robert Downey Jr., Chris Hemsworth, Scarlett Johansson, um, Jeremy Renner, uh, a lot of those guys, we're kind of like it's a little up in the air what's going on with them. Uh, Ruffalo and Evans, I guess they're, I, they're pretty much out. I guess uh, Ruffalo's made mentioned that he's uh, kind of all done doing the Hulk. Uh, Chris Evans, um, he's been trying to get out for a while. Not trying to get out, but I think he's kind of like felt that he's been done for since the second Avengers movie, I guess, or Civil War. Um, he's going to foray into uh, political blogging or whatever he he plans on doing or directing. Uh, Downey. Uh, I don't see him, I mean, maybe he could, like, you know, I, I see him maybe being a mentor in sort of the Marvel Universe going forward, maybe not, I mean, he stopped putting on the suit, you know, years ago, and kind of just, like, filming his face and that kind of thing. Uh, Hemsworth, he, um, he kind of up in the air, who knows, uh, since Ragnarok uh, was a success, uh, mostly due to the fact that Chris, Hem- Chris Hemsworth uh, wanted to take it in a more comedic direction. Uh, and Disney caved with, with that and kind of let him have his way. I think he's a little more happy, maybe a little more apt to do more Thor movies. Um, Scarlett Johansson, of course, has a Black Widow movie finally being made. Uh, I don't know, too little, too late. Who knows? We'll see how it goes. Um, and I guess Jeremy Renner, they announced at this presentation that he'll be doing a, uh, a Hawkeye Kate Bishop show. So um, whether or not he's just there to pass the torch on and then move on, or if he's there like, for the entire series, and who knows. Um, but anyway, that, that's a thing. Uh, so I mean, as far as the future of the MCU universe goes, and the uh, in the films anyway, I mean, we have we don't really have much to, to chew on really. There's only been really three kind of um, definites: um, the Eternals movie, uh, Shang Chi, and Black Widow. Black Widow. I mean. Uh, I kind of feel like they missed their window on it. I think uh, they were going to make a Black Widow movie they should have made it years ago, striking all the irons hot. Now, unless they do a, a prequel, I mean, I don't know where we would really take the character right now. I, I think a prequel would be the best place to go. Uh, Shang-Chi, I mean, that, that's going to be like either like you know hit or miss. It's going to make either Ant-Man money or uh, or Ant-Man money. Uh, they they kind of screwed the pooch with uh, Iron Fist. It seemed like you know an easy movie to make, but apparently... Uh, they kind of dropped the ball at that. Hopefully they can redeem themselves with Shang-Chi. He's a, a little-known property. Not let, a lot of people know about it. Um, just <clears throat> getting the right director and right cast, right story. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Eternals. Uh, Eternals is something that I, I, I think, you know, we're going to have to see. I, I don't think there's been any huge Eternal fans out there. I think you kind of do what you want with it. From As, as far as like what I've been hearing... Um, which is very, very little, aside from casting. It, it kind of sounds like a, like a, a sci-fi 
type uh, American Horror Story, which which I'm down. That's that sounds good to me. Uh, possibly Angelina Jolie in it. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, as far as that goes, I mean, I, I don't know. With with with, a, with the Iron Man less, uh, you know, Hulk less, Captain America less, you know, Marvel Universe. That I don't know. But, but, but it's kind of you know. Who knows where the movie, where the movie universe is going to be, if it, if it even is going to be, because uh, we get this Disney Plus service with a bunch of uh, uh, shows being being announced. Shows like uh, the Loki show, uh, Tom Hiddleston's. Uh, at least uh, he's announced that he's going to be appearing in it. Who knows? There's going to be a, a young Loki show with uh, Tom Hiddleston kind of just uh, narrating it, which has been kind of the thought behind it. Um, there's a Scar, Wanda, Wanda Vision, which is a um, Scarlet Witch and Vision uh, show coming out, which, I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, you know, I, I love Wanda in both the comics and the movies, but I don't know if she's able to carry an entire show. I mean, it, it, especially in Vision, I mean, like, everybody's least favorite Avenger, um, which she also is, like, you know, the actor playing Vision, I forget his name, like Paul Bent, not Paul, maybe Paul Bentley, I think, um, kind of always complaining about all the prosthetics and the makeup and how long it takes, how much he hates it, and how... So I mean I don't know why they would kind of like you know okay let, you know that character you hate you hate like you know gearing up for let's let's, let's do like you know ten episodes of that um, I don't know uh, I don't see how unless unless you introduce Wonder Man um, and like you know I don't know how you kind of like you know do that show but anyway it's a thing uh, Bucky and Falcon is another one uh, another show where I mean like Bucky like he, he's not as far as like you know CG goes. I mean, he's not much. He's mostly guns and you get the metal arms. So, I mean, it's mostly kind of a props type thing. Uh, Falcon, I mean, there's a lot of flying. But even with that, I mean, you can kind of... That's mostly camera angles and, like, you know, stuff you can do in post. Uh, so, I mean, Feige has mentioned that he's going to be... Like, you know, these, these movies are going to have... These shows are going to have, like, a movie budget. But, I mean, like, you know, Bucky and Falcon, I don't know. A lot of these shows, it kind of seems like, you know, why... I mean, we saw Civil War. We had there's that scene with like you know, in the car with with you know, Bucky and Falcon, and they kind of make like that like you know nod to just to see not Rogers, and they they qu- quibble a little bit, and like you know yeah, I was I was kind of like you know amused by it, but like I, not so much the fact where it's like you know what we could use is um, like ten hours of this, you know I mean I don't know if the chemistry is that strong, but um yeah they're making the shows um. They all have movie budgets according. They're all gonna be run by 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 Foggy. Um, the, the only thing I, I well, it is kind of cool to see these movie these shows. I keep on calling them movies. Um, these shows, which Kevin Foggy said, like you know, is gonna make make a play a huge part into the movies. So if you want to know what's going on in the movies, you gotta watch these shows. You know, synergy. Um, but the thing is, um, I mentioned I, I kind of mentioned like meh. Like who who's really asking for these shows and like you know and why wouldn't you like I mean you have like you know the X Men the Fantastic Four coming into the fold um, Deadpool and a couple you know other X properties why would you take these movie properties and kind of like you know water them down when you have these other properties which were kind of made like you know for for a serialized format um, and when it comes to Disney I mean I I grew up in the nineties. I've kind of seen Disney, what it does with, with properties, that like, you know, they, as far as, like, milking them for all they're worth. Um, you had something like the Mighty Ducks franchise, where they made just one movie too many, because they really wanted to milk all that Mighty Ducks money. Um, and then even after, like, you know, they made that last, the D3, which nobody watched, they're like, oh, let's let's wash it off, and kind of, like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll rework it into an animated series with alien ducks. See if we can build a franchise with that based on the name, and no one wanted that either. Um, the mean the mo- direct DVD movie, direct not DVD DVD back then it was direct to uh, VHS uh, movies like the Aladdin franchise, which went like four movies, The Little Mermaid, same thing, several movies, The Lion King, like you know, movies that like you know just just dipped further and further down as far as quality goes, and. Uh, I, you know Disney, like you know, it, it seems like I don't know if they're doing that with the Marvel with the Marvel shows now. Are we are we just kind of like you know trying to milk it for all it's worth while like you know while the iron's hot, try to get try to get as many folds that you know folds out as we can. Um, they, and it's not just like you know with properties like you know 
like, like you know, there's also stuff like you know the cars, which you know like cars movies, which we made like you know two, you know, one movie which was bad enough, then they made two more sequels, the Toy Story movies, which are on like you know the fifteenth, like you know installment. Uh, yeah, I mean, like it's, it's, it seems like you know Disney just kind of like you know once they have a good idea, they kind of milk it and squeeze it for all it's worth. Even you know properties that weren't there, as properties they acquired, like Marvel. Um, you know, I remember when Disney got the rights to Doug, and kind of like you know just just took all the what was special out of that show when they when they premiered it on ABC, the, their their Saturday morning block, kind of watered it down, neutered it. Uh, the Power Rangers franchise, which they owned for a little while and did absolutely nothing with it until they actually just gave it back to Saban. Um, so yeah, I mean it's. You know, so with Disney having a history of doing that, even their movies now, I mean, like, there's no origin. Disney just seems to take, like, properties and IPs and kind of just, like, you know, really get all the juice out of them until they just wither off the vine and die. Even their their movies, like, their, their classic movies, like The Lion King and Beauty and the Beast and, um, you know, even Dumbo. Like, you know, they're just, like, make, like, we can't, we don't have any more original ideas, so let's just make live-action versions of our animated movies which seen, I don't know. It's, it's very like it's not very inspiring as far as like faith goes and what Disney would do with um with the Marvel properties now that it's on the streaming service, the Disney Plus service. Uh, I think like you know something like you know Fantastic Four, X Men, which Feige's going to be taking you know going to be taking ownership of those. I mean, is is he balancing too many plates now? Um, you have the movies now. You have the Disney Plus ser- uh, service, the shows. How long before he just drops everything and, like, you know, it kind of just crumbles like, you know, these things tend to do and have been proven they have done in the past. Um, does he need somebody's help? I mean, like, you know, I mean, like, an, like, you know, a secondary person in charge of these franchises. I heard, like, before, like, the whole thing went down with James Gunn. Gunn was going to kind of take the reins of the, uh, the you know, the Marvel Cosmic Universe while Foggy focused on other things. I'm assuming the uh, Disney Plus shows. Uh, I, mean, I don't know. I mean... Is there even a, a, a future for the movies? I mean, I, I tend to think so. That the, they're still making lots and lots of money for the uh, for Disney. Uh, there's still an audience, obviously. And like that brand, like you know, is people are really into it. But I mean, if you're putting movie budgets into these shows, I mean, as far as comp books go, they're kind of like you know made for a serialized format, which is like you know what TV is. Um, why would you do? Why would you have like you know? We'll take X Men. Why would you make, just pick a story from X Men or write a story for X Men when you could just like you know carry it out for like you know ten twenty episodes for every year? Um, they're kind of built for a serialized format like that for cliffhangers and for like you know installments. So I mean maybe that's the future. Maybe the Disney Plus uh, service is the future of the Marvel Universe. Maybe the the time for the movies is all over. Um, is it? I mean, should me? I I always like you know gut reaction tends to be cynical, but I like to be you know optimistic about this i mean there's nothing i like more than to be proven wrong as far as like you know when i'm yelling doom and gloom about certain things like this but i mean if anything did you know marvel's proven that they can like you know overcome the normal like you know boxing in and able to make great things out of what people would normally think wouldn't work so let's see what happens uh what do you guys think as far as the yeah, disney plus are you guys excited about it uh, me, I'm excited to get all that that back Disney content. I wouldn't mind like you know watching like you know a lot of Disney afternoon uh, cartoons. Things that never got like, an official DVD release, like stuff like uh, the Gargoyles show, would be nice to watch. Uh, some old shows like My So Called Life that was owned by ABC. Um, a lot of ABC properties. Um, the Sim, oh, the Simpsons. Apparently, those are uh, part of the presentation. There was a little Simpsons clip. Uh, you guys can look that up on YouTube. Uh, I can post a link to it, but uh, it was pretty funny. Um, that was one of the things I was kind of wondering about was some of the uh, edgier Fox properties, uh, fa- Family Guy, The Simpsons, that kind of thing. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. But uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. Um, Disney Plus, the, the the future or 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 the doom, the apocalypse of uh, Marvel. Let us know. Uh, we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.